What? October 17th? What? The fuck? We're playing as Hannah! Oh shit! Zack's last! If this is in order, it's probably in order. Huh. Alright. Um, we're playing as Hannah now. That's a very abrupt ending for. Oh god, what? It goes all the way to November 1st! Did I mess up? Oh. Poop. Alright, well, anyways. Hannah Wright Nay Evans. April 30th, Taurus, 31 years old, 5'7, 170 centimeters. Occupation heiress? Former finance manager. Damn! Like an economics major. Er, uh, finance major? Marketing major? I don't know. I don't know what you need for that. Nationality British? Religion and Anglican? The fuck? Hold on. Anglicanism. Adherence, also called Anglicans. The hell? Is a Western Christian tradition that evolved out of the practices of liturgy and identity of the Church of England following the Protestant Reformation in the 16th century. All right. It's a very old religion. Gotcha. Oh, okay. Masters in Business Administration. Ah, okay. Major in Accounting. Damn. He's smart. Likes booyah base, dogs, fashion, parties, and dancing the beach, children, iconic women, charity, and math. Of the looks for and upper classes, Hannah is used to living a life of luxury. Absent parents made her crave for attention though, something she gained from her private tutors and nannies instead. It was never enough, however. She studied hard in order to make her parents proud going into business so that she could work alongside them. The challenge in her otherwise privileged life was certainly a thrill for her at her very least. She had many suitors dating different men and women, but it was through work that she met Luke. It was love at first sight for her. Upon her parents' death, Luke proposed to her. That was the move that led to the merging of Wright Enterprise and Evans Incorporated and their subsequent retirement. Their seven-year marriage is strained, but Mary, uh, but Hannah tries her best to make it work. Seven years. Married pretty young. All right, so we are playing as Hannah. Gotcha. Why is her relationship with Luke so low? Is it because the whole N-word spat? Because fuck Luke. I think she was right in scolding him. I think we can all agree she was right in scolding him for that. It is far too easy to get them to pay attention in Raptured. They hang on to my every word and follow my every move. All of it would have been stifling had I not grown accustomed to such stares. Most are respectful, some are hostile, if we are honest, and a few of them downright inappropriate. After all, I am... Hana right! Jesus Christ! Wait! Aren't you the priest? There's a movement of agitation as a familiar but less than welcome face approaches me with a suggested smirf smirk on his face. Of course, I have to keep a benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any good friend. After all, this man can hurt turn heads, being famous in his own right. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise. I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party. He is more Luke's friend than mine, really, and I'm quite sure I only invited his wife. Much like I am only friends with the Chief Inspector because of the Luke, Luke is only friends with Rochelle because of me. Unlike how I treated Lee, however, Luke had never hit his animosity for the Lee matriarch. It was an odd sort of friendship where we would have had awkward double dates. I don't even recall his first name. I 
I think it started with an N, I think. I might be wrong. Aside from being Chief Inspector of Luxborn Police, his wife, Rochelle Lee Nevance, owns a general electronics company, fridges and freezers mostly. Oh, I always have time for my favorite social eye couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. I see the husband isn't with you. Whoa. The way he eyes me up is enough to make my skin crawl. I just wish Luke was here to fend off the more unseemly of our peers. You know the ones. Men who are just about a bit too friendly, staring too long at my assets, and getting cl close enough just because my husband is not here. And I think they have the gall to do this in my own party. In my own house, if I might add. But like any high society woman with assault, I know how to handle it with grace and dignity. I... I suppose you are looking pleasant as well. Luke's busy with work, unfortunately. Michelle isn't here? Hmm, a shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her being pregnant and all. Oh, she's pregnant! We make small talk. Uh, rather, I'm forced to do so as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. Much to my chagrin, I've been ex extricated from the few who flock in the hopes of flattering, for I can tolerate them far better than Lee. He's a nice enough person, that, and I adore his wife, who is obviously the brains behind the two, but there's something unsettling about him. I do not trust him as much as I want to. He regaled me... He regaled to me tales of the Luxborn Police Department that different affair to the usual gossip I'm privy to, and though I'm loath to admit, it is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which would be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of his work. But boy oh boy was I wrong! So, we're in civvies, I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tent chasing on foot and screaming about theft. The look on his face was priceless when I parked it in the garage. Oh my, you made him chase you all the way home for a prank. What did Rochelle have to say about that? Do the Luxburg police chief not have anything better to do? Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. He is an American man who, do not, who did not grow up past his early 20s, judging by the way he acts. Surprisingly enough, they have been married for a good 20 years. A lifetime if you compare it to my marriage of 7 years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well, Luke is no Lee. I should be happy about that, I suppose. Although my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my ear and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? Move for work, you know. Or you probably don't. No, I don't. But a flat in downtown. I suppose if that's what you like. Oh, it's all right. Hate that tiny place. No matter how convenient it can be for work, 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion, you know the one, the one with all the ghost stories. I know what he's talking about. There are really only a few urban legends around here. It's... The Ermagood Mansion? Ah, uh, that's the one. A worthy of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. Not to mention all the expenses a place like that. It'll be a real fixer-upper. You also have to find someone willing to work there with how superstitious people can be. If it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism. Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. Because I'm a priest. He's the priest, right? You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? Oh wait, no wait. No, no, no. Oh shit, he is the priest! Oh shit, because... Hannah's like, his first name... Is an N something. And the father's name is Norman. Norman Lee? Is that you? Are you Norman? Father Norman? Okay. Does he have like a split personality or something? Of course. It was an excellent soiree. 
Everything was so classy too. Because he has such a such like, good taste. He has a very thick accent. Oh, that place was a big star until they hired out this interior designer and they turned it into a bloody palace. She worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. I think I have a business card, right? No, I must have left it in my other jacket. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name, uh, McCullough, uh, Marianne, I believe, yes. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in McCullough, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Well, if you put it that way, I might just snatch it up for myself. This place was starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. What? You're a three-story penthouse. What? Might not fit the definition of small for some people. Okay, maybe a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you. At least she's self-aware. But it isn't big enough to have a grand parties in. As it is, I only invited about 30 to this one. And it always already feels cramped in here. What? There's so much open space everywhere. It certainly would be nice if I didn't have to ride up an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. All Luke's words and not mine. Besides, I've been looking for a good anniversary gift. A fucking mansion? Oh my god. Luke might like this one. Where is he anyway? Next day. Oh. Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is. I'm gonna try not to... Like, I've been questioning a lot of things. And it like almost immediately is answered in the next two dialogues. So I'm gonna try like not asking questions too much. Probably impossible. Luke is dressed to the nines as he usually is and he looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. His butler and valet wait at his side just in case he isn't as ready as he looks. Oh sure that is normal. What is confusing me is the fact that he is on his way out of the penthouse considering we won't have anywhere to go until much later. Where are you going? I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. Yes. And might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. Is this just me or is the butler fucking hot? Guy, he is so well dressed. He looks great! And his hair! God damn it! It's probably just me. Sorry, don't- just ignore me. I'm infatuated right now. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. I've even found this marvelous interior designer, Mary Ann McCullough. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. <sighs> you know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking, unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. I... I love him even more. I didn't expect that accent. Whoa. Where? Uh, where are you from, jo Johans? Johans? Johannes? Uh, love Zach and Johan so far. Isabel is nice, but she puts up too much with Ash, so he's probably already taken. Uh. Huh. And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. German, maybe? Bullocks, I don't remember doing so. Well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps that was a bit too cruel and manipulative of me, but... Whose side are you on? <laughs> Come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Gordon Bennett, fine. I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff and you are going to take a cab home. Oh, they are such loving it's seven year marriage people. Are we clear? Jesus. It's a it's just a bit of a husband and wife tit for tat, isn't it? 
all couples have their arguments. Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Perhaps it has been for the years. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. So sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements, and I have to stop myself from wondering where we went wrong. There's always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Have I been neg ne neglectful? Have I offended? Have I acted shamefully? Yes, but Cardiff. Certainly any problem can be discussed. As long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Why must he treat me this? Fuck this guy! No, 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 no. Yes, I am very happy, Luke. Because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. Hell yeah. I don't know if it went up or down. But fuck him. I'm ecstatic. Understood. And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. Oh shit. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. And you are going to behave during the tour. Damn. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Needless to say, Luke seems a bit shocked at my little outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply before he crosses his arms to look like, well, a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? No wine. No wine? Unacceptable! Huh? I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? If I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. You keep alcohol in your dresser? Whose side are you on? <laughs> How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor. I guess they're like best friends. The ride to the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Meanwhile, I'm conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that. But by the time we arrive at the mansion and see his lies eyed up in genuine interest, Apologizing is the last thing on my mind. Okay, something. I don't know. I don't know how. I don't like being here. I think we can all agree. Uh, no one likes being back in this mansion. The whole affair with the Ermengarde mansion is certainly an interesting experience. The place had been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claim to be acceptable standards. Mansion itself looks like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated and with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place Luke and I can call home. Any number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxborn certainly did not disappoint, marking this estate as prime property. The Lees are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman, and I saw a few other notable faces though I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately for everyone, of them, the rights are interested in buying. Okay. What's been bugging on me? Oh, this oh this scene. What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What's her problem? I still don't quite understand what's happening. One moment she's scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale, then she's panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. The second thing on my mind is how touching my darling husband is being towards the poor dear. I cannot even plaster a smile on my face, a horde scowl taking its place. There's no way I can pretend nothing is wrong as I hum. And I'm sure little Lily here would certainly appreciate it if you remove your pretty hands from her. D he is quick enough to detract his hand, which is all that the girl needs to, well, for a lack of better word, escape. I, I think I need to step out for a while. I'll be back. Her partner follows, shouting after her without hesitation. There's an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of whatever that was. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking out of the poor daft girl and telling the tale of whoever was not audience to the act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for the ro woman, Rose, to return and pull us aside for the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. 
This is a new room. This looks like the room from the intro. Uh, for Luke, actually. Rose invites Marianne in too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke, the last all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. And it must be this terrible heat too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Oh, it's fine. The poor girl must feel so embarrassed about what she just did. But I say, let bygones be bygones. After all, she's only a child. She looked, what, 19? She's 26. I shoot Luke an accusing look at these words. After all, he tried flirting with the girl. The nerve of him. And not only that Isabel girl, but also Mary Ann and Rose too. What kind of husband would think that it's even a remotely good idea to make moves on three different women while his wife stands there? Did he drink while I was looking? She's a bit older than that. But again, I apologize. And if there's any way I can make up for what just happened, just... I know what you can do. Be a darling flower and get us one of those bottles you plan to serve. Pop it open. We were planning on serving some champagne. I, I can get that. That would be lovely. Much obliged. Do you want a glass as well, Ms. Wright? Oh no, I'm fine. I really shouldn't be drinking right now. What she mean by that? And Luke shouldn't be either. But right now, I'm just too tired for any sort of argument. I don't have the heart to scold him in public as well. I'm certainly, certainly not his mother. I just want to get this horde do day done with go home and sleep. Perhaps I'll even have a strong papa before I head off to bed. Yes, that sounds nice. Cup of tea? When Rose comes back with the champagne, I beckon her over. They've told her partner before. I have every intent of acquiring this house. I might as well, even if I'm having second thoughts about getting it for Luke. The moment we, the Wrights, had expressed interest in this place, we've had eyes set upon this. If we don't buy it, that might as well be the signal to have busybodies gossip about how we may or may not have lost our fortune. Regardless of the fact that it is false, image is everything when de dealing with these people. These are the unspoken rules for people such as ourselves. Besides, I really did like the place. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Oh! Except for this ugly painting in the... That's not a painting! It looks like a bad fake of Edvard Munch painting. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. Oh! My heart skipped a beat! In the worst way possible! <laughs> that surprised the shit out of me! Come on, ghost lady! Don't do that! If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. Holy shit. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price, wow. and we can sign all the paperwork now. 15%? I guess, if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. Wait. Wait, wait, wait. She could... Hannah sees the ghost already? Oh, that's because she saw the letter. Oh, fuck. That means is. Oh, no, that means everyone else is seeing. Oh, yes, that's not good. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in then? Marianne? All oh, right. She's been waiting outside in the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little mansion project forward. Please do. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Oh, she, he's seen it. He's seen it. Absolutely. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know if she's actually seen it. Yet like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. We have this project then? Of course. Will you be needing anything from us? 
Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. Do they see it? Or is it just Tana? A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? Yep, it's just her. And lo and behold, the painting is gone. In its place, a mirror stands, which leads me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. I don't like. I don't like. Don't like where this is going. Uh, yeah, well, she insisted. Might as well be professional about this. But I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over book club. Why well, we can hold the next meeting in this place? Surely the beauty and grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debates of whether modern day writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off onto the Ermengarde, or rather the right mansion, makes a great debut. I'll have to fill- uh, I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project of this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. Breakfast, then! It's a date. It's really not. <laughs> Alright. Monday. 10 o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at 9, but who is even awake at the unholy hour? I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> not that I'm complaining. Well, I'm glad you're not complaining like you usually do. It's a right and proper Christmas miracle, isn't it? Hannah has finally done something right. I refuse to look at him, staring at the passing scene and said, Hey Buttercup, what's with this cheek? Rose, Lily, Mint. The nerve, Luke, the nerve! Damn! That's a pissed off look is that what this is about one that woman's name was rose and two you know i don't mean a word of that empty flirting uh, do you i don't i don't trust you luke and it's still the principle of things luke i understand if you try to woo them to get what you want when it seems that i'm not looking but i told you once before not to do it when i'm there Luke dealt with other women in the past to get what he wanted. What? Sometimes I have my doubts. I really want to believe that I'm an exception, that he is not just using me like he used those other girls. I'm having a hard time believing that now. And it isn't just the shameless fl flirting, there's something about the Mary Ann woman. As if Luke is familiar- Oh fuck. As much as it shames me, it makes jealousy rear its ugly head. I am suffice to say ticked off. Really? I forfeit my trip to Cardiff for this, and you're still not happy. Oh, trust me, Luke. I am very happy. Very happy that, for once, we are doing something that I want. Can you not see the smile on my face? No. It is only when I let loose those words that the truth hits me like a slap to the face. And by the looks of it, it seems to have the same effect on my dear darling husband. It has always been Luke wants to do this, Luke wants to do that, hasn't it? I don't even remember the last trip we went to, which was of my own choosing, without needing to get the man's approval. On the other hand, I was pulled along to every single expedition he, watched, he wished to tackle, and I never objected. The rest of the ride home is spent ignoring each other, pretending the other didn't exist. Arriving at our penthouse, my first order of business is to get to, into bed. Forget a hot bath and forget the tea. I just want to bury myself in blankets and forget about everything in my slumber. 
It seems that Luke has the same idea in mind he, as he tags along behind me. But this is something I will not allow the moment I pass through the door. Out! What the bloody hell, woman? This is my bedroom too! <laughs> wow, I kind of didn't expect that tone. Luke stands flabbergasted as I deny him entry into our chambers. His pillows lie on the cold, tiled floors away from the warmth of our soft down bed. And my gaze promises him the same fate if he does not budge on this matter. Don't even try to argue because I am very cross with you, Luke Wright. You can take the second bedroom or the guest room if you wish. But I do not want to see you at all for the rest of the night. Johans! Our butler wanders over a curious expression on his face. He doesn't... He doesn't quite hurry, moving at a relaxed pace no matter how angry his master sounded. No, you are not allowed to sleep in my room, sir. <laughs> That's not what I mean! Help me talk some sense into her! There is no sense in questioning her right to be angry, sir. Hey, what a good friend. So, if I might be excused, I'll go prepare the second bedroom for you. I have to keep a straight face as he stomps away in defeat. Mutiny! This is mutiny! The system is being upturned, and the people are rioting, and everything is left asunder! It isn't every day that Luke is rendered speechless by someone he considers inferior, or to yield to another authority without an ulterior motive. His pride just won't allow it. I do keep telling the man to treat his people better. He may throw whatever fit he wants, but he will not be getting his way tonight. Victorious, I celebrate by jumping face first onto our bed. Undignified, yes, but nobody is here to judge me anyway. Right? Nobody is here to tell me what to do. Yet, as I succumb to sleep, I can hear them whisper to me. What the fuck? What the fuck is that? Why do you have a shaft? Or a... Like a... What is that? Why do you have a shaft? I can hear them whispering. Calling for me. They want me. Need me. They drown me, pull me down, and suffocate me in their embrace until I sink to the bottom. Deep abyss of waves, inviting yet for both. Don't like this. They're calling me from in there, aren't they? And I do want to help, I do. But when I try to reach out, something pulls me back, like a hook sinking itself into my stomach. <laughs> I scared myself as much as that scared myself. As redundant as that sounds. I I scared myself. I've never done that before. Alright, as I break through the surface with my with a gasp. Alone in bed and without Luke to hog the covers, I'm swathed in cloth and slicked with sweat. It takes me a while to untangle myself and kick them all off. Both the bed and I are a right mess by the end of it all. But I am more than eager to just get up and go out for some fresh air. Some nice drawings in this notebook. Whose notebook is this? I don't think I've asked that question. Oh, today is the day of uh, Zach's film at the film festival. The days passed by. Uh, the days passed and gone by a blur. We hadn't talked much, Luke and I, outside of necessity. In fact, we've hardly talked beyond the talk topic of acquisitions of properties. Properties being the mansion, obviously. Everything has been so busy that I haven't been haven't talked to anyone outside of the business and it is just so stressing. So I can understand someone can understand my need for a good chat, preferably over a good meal. There are times with any decent, emotionally healthy and socially capable person need a good friend. One who will talk to them without the conversation degrading or turning into an argument. Or barring a nearby friend, I have an interior designer under a confidentiality agreement to listen to me. Up higher! Come on now! The place is bustling with movers carrying furnishing here and there, along with several trunks of personal belongings taken from her penthouse. I can hear Luke barking at them in the other room, making sure nothing is handled carelessly or gets stolen. Careful now! 
I know your pictures are framed by cheap plastic. Damn. But those are framed by African blackwood and are one of a kind commissioned paintings. Each one is easily worth a lifetime of what you not make. It is hard to tune him out. The walls did not have a good job of muffling him at all. But then again, it is Luke. I would still hear him ranting even if we were on the opposite sides of the mansion and I'm wearing earplugs. I'd really like to thank you for inviting me to breakfast, Mrs. Wright. But I already ate, so I should really go back to work. Nonsense! You arrived so early, you must not have gotten a proper meal. Our butler has made a surprisingly lovely bubble and squeak. The fuck is that? Sit, sit! I'd situate us in the dining hall, but it is a mess right now. Oh, Johans! The man in question appears ready with the tray as he starts to set the table for us. We sit in silence as we are each served a plate. Oh, I don't know what that is. It looks like egg on top of a giant tater tot. Orange juice and some tea? A uh, bubble and squeak topped with a nicely poached egg with cherry tomatoes and other garnishes adorning the edges of the plate. What the fuck is bubble and squeak? It's not a giant tater tot, is it? Bubble and squeak recipe. BBC good food. Bubble and squeak is a traditional English dish made from the shallow fried leftover vegetables from a roast dinner. Ooh. The main ingredients is potato, but cabbage, carrots, peas, brussels sprouts, or any other leftover vegetables can be added. Oh, that sounds really good. A cup and saucer and a teapot with some Earl Grey is placed down for Marianne as I ask for Orange Julius. How are you liking the project? Drop that vase and I'll have your head! I know it's only an 8 million yen vase, but I swear, I'll... Well... It's certainly a fun challenge, incorporating the designs of a Jacobean manor and the functionality of a modern household. I have ideas I would like to suggest, by the way, about what to use the second bedroom for. I have been informed of your goddaughter and thought a kid-friendly room might be in order. Goddaughter? You read my mind. I was actually going to bring that up. Oh, that would just be so lovely, Marianne. That way, Kylie can bring her friends over as well. Who is Kylie and is she gonna die because she's not in the relationship thing? Oh boy. And a good friend of mine, Rochelle, is expecting a baby. So, why don't we think about putting a crib in there too? I can just imagine little ones running around. Filling this place with the pitta patter of their feet. We'd have to make sure they don't trip and fall on the stairs though. We won't be able to finish everything up until after the party. But we'll have it ready by then, so that all we need to do is to move in the furnishings. Yes, that's plenty fine. It's not like we're in a hurry to have it. And we wouldn't want the workers to disturb the guests or the other way around, do we? Just make sure it's presentable. You know, in case a guest snoops about. Of course. As for the kitchen you wanted, I've already negotiated for the high-end stoves and the hot and cold drawers, so on and so forth. I've got a friend who was able to customize them so that they'll look like the counters we'll be replacing and fit the rest of the interior. They'll be bringing them in today. Why can't you people do anything right? Don't drag it, you'll scratch the wood. Excellent. <laughs> but no, really, how have you liked it so far? Oh, it has been wonderful, believe me. Everything is going smoothly too. It has been a long time since I've worked on something in this grand a scale. Nowadays, everyone is about condos and flats. Living in the city where every room is an identical box. Oh, uh, is, a, is a flat of apartment in uh, England? What it is, right? Believe me, this is very refreshing. We lived in a condo before this, Marianne. Yeah, three-story penthouse in the middle of a city. Uh, I didn't mean any insult. I... It's fine, sweetie. Look at you, all frazzled. I was just pulling your leg. Aww. Luke wanted that penthouse when we got married, and you can thank him for purchasing this place as well. He looks confused. Of course she has every right to be. She no doubt overheard me push that estate agent into the sale, making quite the aggressive offer. He saw me sign the papers for the mansion as well. I just had to scoff. Don't be fooled. I'm just the treasury. I wouldn't be able to make a purchase this grand without his seal of approval. 
I see. That's it? That's all you have to say? Yes. It wouldn't be appropriate to comment further. It is unprofessional. Unprofessional? I can't help but let out a deep sigh as I stick a fork into my dish. I didn't want professionalism. I want someone who will either agree with me even if it's just for the sake of agreeing or someone who will try to talk some sense into me. Neutral responses are so boring. There's no discourse in the middle ground. The food is good. Best bubble and squeak. Of course it is. Our kitchen staff only uses the freshest hand-picked ingredients. Wait. I thought it was leftover vegetables from a, like a pot roast or something. Huh. Only the best for the rights. Mr. Wright is not joining us? No. He is far too busy bossing people around. <laughs> yep. He even refused to join me for breakfast earlier. Hence, this. I see. My apologies. I really don't know what sort of response you expect to get from me. <laughs> what? Okay, there is a clatter of silverware as I slam my hands on the table. It is frustrating. I am frustrated. And Luke, mostly. Marianne's neutral professional answers are certainly irksome as well. You're a human with feelings and opinions, aren't you? Jesus, alright. Don't give me this bollocks about being professional when we're having a nice friendly chat over a nice and friendly breakfast. Jesus Christ, lady! Just calm it down! I can only talk about interior designs for so long and I detest one-sided conversations, Marianne. She is so needy! Oh my god! But I really don't know what to say, Mrs. Wright. Yeah, I I get Marianne's position. We were talking of no topic in particular, and Luke. We were talking about Luke. Oh, great. About him not eating breakfast with you? About him treating me as if I were some treasury. I didn't realize I was shouted that out loud, but it, until it is too late. There is a stunned silence that settled before I slumped back into my seat. Hiding my face behind my hands, I can feel my shoulders shake. Breathe, I told myself, calm down. But it is just so hard. Honestly, sometimes I feel like he doesn't love me anymore. Oh, have I been so blind? Did he ever love me at all? Was our marriage all for the sake of saving his company and his wealth? Because... Because? Did I say that all out loud? Again? No, this is bad. Unacceptable. It has been rumored before the real reason for engagement, but if anyone were to know of this, marriages of necessity to carry out political and financial power used to be a common thing, but the Evan Wright's union is the perfect happily ever after. Not really, didn't? Didn't Luke marry her right after both her parents passed away? So I'm pretty sure there was some ulterior motive there was supposed to be i'm not it's just i don't like luke and that's why all this skepticism about him is going about it is true that we first met each other in order to discuss dealings to make them to make the then failing right enterprise a subsidiary for evans incorporated but i do remember being in love with him and there were times when he lo said and loved me back even if i'm not sure of what the truth is now Either way, I do not want the right name or the Evans name dragged through the mud because of a slip-up. What? And if Marianne so much as talked of this, I'm not gonna threaten her. Marianne is a good sort, isn't she? Yeah, she is. So as so far, she has been reasonable and accommodating, even toward Luke's ridiculous requests. Patient and professional. Did it only extend to business? Or would she be able to understand that things like this are not as simple and not as clean as they are painted to be? Certainly, I can talk to her. Let's ask her for- I won't speak a word, Mrs. Wright. She's a good egg. Not only am I contractually obliged to, it would also go against my principles. This is no one else's business but your own, and it should be kept between the two of you. A good egg. And whoever you wish to seek counsel from. Please, Marianne. You have to understand. These sort of affairs. If anyone were to know this, they could just twist it and we'll be ruined. 
All I ask for is your silence on the matter. If I am to be frank, Mrs. Wright, this isn't new for me. You aren't the first and you certainly won't be the last to have complicated dealings. Unless what you're doing is illegal, I turn a blind eye. And I trust her. <laughs> if I wasn't in the same boat, I'd be trying to pry those secrets and gossip with you about them by now. Well, I'm keeping that information confidential as well. It's not like I have any other choice, do I? Thank you. We continue to eat our meal in peace, finishing the last of the food and drink. When the door to the parlor opened, Marianne and I are just sitting in silence. Madam, the photographer from Luxury Living is here. I give him nothing but a small nod. This was a wonderful meal, Marianne. You're free to return to your duties. I must excuse myself. It was my pleasure, and thank you for the food as well. Making my way downstairs, I look back and see Marianne give me a nod and a small smile. That certainly put me in lighter spirits. An interview with Luxury Living. That is today, isn't it? Oh yeah. People have caught wind of our new mansion the very moment we opened the, we left to open the house. Luke had boasted me he could acquire the property in no time and allowed a photo shoot for an interior design magazine to be scheduled today. Well, there were complications and it took longer than it usually does for us. Hopefully, I won't have any other unfortunate slip-ups with someone who isn't bound by confidentiality. I'm gonna save. Alright. The mansion grounds has been one of the first things to be fixed up aside from the bedroom. Although it's still a work in progress at a promising start, I can already see the... the my voice! <coughs> Hold on, let me... Let me quickly grab some water and some hot tea. <clears throat> Quick break. And uh, yeah, I'll see you back in like... Okay, he is now brewing? I'm not sure what the ter term is used. Boiling water for the tea, basically. <coughs> Although it's still a work in progress, it had a promising start and I'll receive the flower patches. What? Luke's favored daffodil. Oh, no, it's actually meant it literally. Luke's favored daffodils stand out easily, having been transplanted from the pots that used to litter the rooftop of our penthouse. Why, if the moving crew thought that Luke was being hard on them, they clearly didn't see the landscaper on his way out. The man looked like he was already ready to faint, and Luke seemed ready to kill him by the end of their discussion. It is in the gardens that I see him standing near the flowers in quiet admiration. It is hard to miss the hulk of a man that clearly did not belong, and the big backpack and suitcase he has with him that makes him look much larger. It is a peculiar sight seeing someone who looks like he does handling little delicate things with such care. He looks up from the gardens and does a double take before a friendly face replaces his serene expression. Miss Wright, yeah? Hi, uh, Zachary Steele here from Luxury Living, ma'am. Hope you weren't waiting too long. But it looks like you're still moving in, huh? Thought for a second there my calendar was wrong and I came here too early. You look familiar have we met i have a very wide social circle so everyone looks familiar at one point or another but one would think i'd remember someone who stands out like him the struggle to recall must have been evident on my face as he quickly and kindly answers my question oh i was with isabella your estate agent when she had the house blessed oh this is afterwards oh yes that's <clears> right <throat> small world isn't it i should have known you were right the one and only. Welcome, welcome to Maison de Right. And yes, 
We've been in the process of moving in as we were delayed. But it won't be a problem. They're just adding a few things here and there, and you should still be able to do your work. Where's the rest of your crew then, Mr. Steele? Zack is fine, please. Mr. Steele makes me feel like I'm a mascot for a cleaning product. Anyway, I'll be your one-man crew for today. Don't worry, been doing this gig for a while now. You must be quite the veteran to handle this on your own. We've had a full crew coming into our penthouse the last time we were covered in your magazine. Veteran? Oh, your words are too kind, Miss Wright. Oh, Zack. Hana, if I get to call you Zack, you have my permission to call me Hana. Alrighty then. Anyway, I'm no veteran, but I know my camera well enough to make sure this is a good shoot. You can trust me on that, Miss Wright, Hana. <laughs> <laughs> Achievement unlocked, Monsieur Le Photograph. Zachary proves quickly enough that I can, in fact, trust him. His skills with the camera and experience in this industry, at, le at the very least. He's kind and courteous, listening and following as I lead him around the house. A really nice fellow. He treats our household staff well whenever we cross paths with them. I answer his questions to the best of my ability, and he is patient enough to answer mine whenever I get curious enough. For one, I ask what the bags are for. They're quite the magician's toolkit. From inside, he had procured several items to embellish the interior with. Bowls of fruit, lemons, trays with pepper mills, stacks of cookbooks, cutting boards, and glass canisters filled with colorful nuts and grains are brought in for the kitchen setting. For the bathroom, there are white towels, seashells, and decorative soaps. There are there are other things as well, too numerous to count, all in that large backpack and suitcase. Tricks of the trade. Softens up a room, makes a place feel more homey, and fills it up with texture. But you guys probably have better stuff I can use for this. No lights. Don't tell me all of these are just props. Well, I've got my tripod here. For things like these, natural light is best. I'll just have to set the shutter speed to a real slow setting, and as long as nobody steps into the shot, it'll look great. Oh, it better. We go through the rooms one at a time, although we first tackle the ones that the movers have no business in anymore. Whoa! There's a fucking ballroom? That's awesome! God, this place is huge! The ballroom needs a little preparation with its grand design, although there is some trouble at first with the wide open space and the pictures being backlit. It is in the kitchen that Zachary's props come in handy considering how Johan's I'm gonna guess it's Johans. Kept the place so neat and sterile, one can practically eat off the floor. Oh. We carry on touring the house and taking pictures where we can, with exception to the rooms we have yet to gain any purpose or design. Too bad I can't take a sneak peek at his photos yet. Funnily enough, he is using a traditional camera. I didn't even know film still existed. With the way he speaks, however, I can see that he knows enough about his craft and that I'm not only too worried about botched photographs. I imagine photography must be cathartic for him, judging by how at ease he looks while taking pictures. There are small snippets of conversation in between the clicking of the camera. He even goes as far as to talk about these terminologies like shutter speeds and aperture when I ask about the technical aspects. I can't quite see the picture as it is made, much like when I ar watch artists paint on their canvas. Oh. Just watching someone passionately practicing their craft, such as this, is exciting in its own way. Going through many rooms has been quite the exercise for the both of us. Wait, what? Despite that, he has been so nice and I find myself putting on my best smile. But it is as we're taking pictures in the foyer that everything comes to a standstill for a moment. Just a moment. And have I not been paying attention, I wouldn't have even noticed. It is merely a split second when Zachary's rhythm is put to a halt. Oh, I see. That's why. Okay, well. His finger doesn't move to release the shutter. Yet he also doesn't pull the camera away from his face, gaze still firmly fixed to the viewfinder. His hands shake and there's a light screen of sweat on his forehead. Zachary. No response. Zach. Is something the matter? Lowering his camera, he blinks and stares at something behind me before shaking his head. Okay, well then. Zack has now seen the ghost. Good. Good. 
turning around though, I see nothing that could have gotten his attention. Oh, oh no, no, there, there, there's nothing wrong. I, I just remembered something that's all. Uh, let's get back to the pictures. Can you move a bit more to the left, yeah? I struggled to respond this time. There is a sudden weight on my back and an indescribable tightness around my throat. Everything stops. And everything starts again as I manage to choke out. If you're sure. I don't know what just happened. It was probably just a dizzy spell. I'm fine. And he said he's fine. We continue at the same pace as before, although there's an unspoken agreement that we will not talk about what happened. Why not? So, is this a full-time job for you then? Why don't they talk about this? Nah, I just freelance mostly for magazines, newspapers, and events. So you can't really call it a full-time job. It's fun and it puts food on the table, but it's not what I really want to do. At least, not all the time. What is it that you want to do then? Maybe I've been out of line sticking my nose into other people's business, but I can't help but ask. I regret doing so as I see his shoulders slump and the easygoing air he has fades away. He looks torn over whether he wants to talk about it or not. Films, documentaries mostly, but cinematography is a lot more difficult than photography, right? I was working on this thing, actually. What thing? Well, it wasn't really a big thing. People didn't like Blue Foncy very much. People don't like a film about colors. I suppose they would have liked Blue Bibby a lot more. Very funny. So, Grand Director, do you want to tell me what Blue Foncy is all about? He hesitates. When I refuse to budge on the matter, he gives in and spills it all out. Alright, hold on. Judging by my two years of high school French, Blue Foncy, Lair La Plus Sombre de Noir Britannique. Ah. Yes, the dark blue, the darkest hours of the black British. Holy shit, what? That's what that film's about? Oh shit, well, that's a lot deeper than I thought. I guess judging by the imagery in the movie theater, that's probably where it led to. He speaks with passion of one who has gone through the very matter he is concerned with. There is conviction, knowledge, and experience in his speech. I'm gonna sneeze. Nope! It's one of those sneezes that just disappeared and is gonna rear his head all of a sudden. If I sneeze all of a sudden, I'm sorry. Why, I would have told him that he's an amazing speaker if only I wasn't so engrossed listening. Prejudice, discrimination in schools and in the workplace. Lesser chances for opportunity and higher chances of being treated as a criminal. He spoke of blacks and people of color in general, still being treated like second class citizens. All because of the color of their skin. It is all just positively riveting and sad. It comes to a point where he soon loses steam. He looks abashed, realizing he had been realizing what he had just done. Sorry, I just got so carried away and It's fine. It is really so fascinating to watch people talk about their passion after all. You should see how your eyes light up when you speak so fiercely. You do have very beautiful eyes. Anna? Uh-huh. Thanks, I guess. <laughs> I want to say that I understand where he's coming from, but I really don't, do I? I was born with a silver spoon in my mouth and I lived in a charmed life. It hasn't been perfect, but the difficulties I've been through pales in comparison to what others experience on a daily basis. I certainly don't know how I would have fared if it were any different. Would I still have met Luke and would he still have loved me if I was any lesser? What was your home like? These things you talk about. It sounds like you... Well, I don't mean to pry, I mean. Hmm? I live with my older sister and my grandparents. We had a shop selling all sorts of things below our pop... Sorry, flat. And well, I was one of the few non-white, non-British students in class. I didn't get pushed around or anything straight up. Even then, I was one of the biggest kids around, but a pencil and notebook would go missing, you know? Oh, that I knew. Children can be so cruel at times. Of course, it may be a slightly different story when you have personal guards and the stolen item is not a pencil, but an expensive heirloom. So what about you? How you liking your new house? It's pretty impressive. 
It's nice, I suppose. You suppose? Not big enough? What? No, oh, don't be a bully. It's just that. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. I was a little girl all dolled up and treated like fragile porcelain with nursemaids waiting to me hand and foot. All the material possessions anyone could have ever wanted, I could ask for on a whim and it would be handed to me just like that. But I barely saw my parents, just goodbye kisses in the morning before they went off to who knows where they needed to be next. I saw them more often to the, on the telly or in the papers than I ever did in person. I remember my old house. It was a lot like this one. Big walls and big halls, but nobody in it. Not really. It makes you think how alone you are. Pent of mood overcomes us. And there's a moment where neither of us are sure of how to go on from there. Things have gotten a bit too personal, yet it isn't wholly uncomfortable. Like, as if we've been friends before. Well, that's normal, ain't it? You just moved here. You'll make home out of it yet. He certainly makes it easy to believe that. My childhood house is indeed a lot like this one. Just as large and extravagant. And just as empty. I hope he's right. So, Monsieur Le Photographe. You've covered the one and only Ermengarde mansion. Oh my god, we're in this room. This hallway. What's next on the agenda? The interview? Boring. It's an interior design and housing magazine. And they want to know what Miss Wright has to say about her interior design and house. Honor Wright thinks she bought a magnificent house that she can certainly brag about. Blah, blah. Boring. You know what they should print more of? I watched an interesting documentary the other day. Blue Fonsi. The Darkest Hours of the Black British. I recommend you watch it. Damn! Those are the things that people should know about. That's pretty nice of her. What do they care if I use a purple or green bowl of fruit in my kitchen? People, right? We oui. People are shite. Damn, alright. Hold on, I thought she was British and not French. Does she just know French? Maybe she just know French. Yeah, nationality British. Huh. I don't know what booyah bays mean, but I know how to say it. What do you think? Do I look good with this angle? I strike a pose while he's biz uh, being busy, looking, ta looking taken aback for a moment, probably not expecting me to just go and say such a crass word. But he recovers quickly, and after snapping a few shots, he grins. Yeah, vous êtes belle. You want copies of these ones? Yes, please. So, the big boy knows French. You must have wooed a few ladies. Unless you're into gents. Who? Either way, French is, after all, the language of romance. No, oh, I don't know about quoting fancy poetry, but I've made lunch for a girl before, and they did like that fancy French cuisine. Uh... Who? Can you cook all your best? Ooh! I can cook just about anything as long as I know the recipe. Hold on, I gotta look up bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse, what is it? I think I know what it is, but... It's like... Can't really... Uh, bouillabaisse is a traditional Provencal. Fish stew originating from the port city of Marseille. The French and English form bouillabaisse from the provincial uh, kitchen word. I don't know how to say that word. A compound. So it's a, it's a fish. It's a fish dish. Fish dish. All right. Oh, God damn it. Say money big. It has been too long since I've had a nice and proper chat with a good friend. No, Lee is certainly not a good friend. And although we've just met, Zachary is the sort of person who could probably befriend anyone. He's just a comfortable person to be around. Agreed. A bit too comfortable. What's that supposed to mean? The photo shoot went by a breeze. Uh, and somewhere along the way, as we talk and laugh, I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. He'll give me the strange look until I back off and he'll go back to asking questions after I agreed to do his little interview. It's just odd. Well, no. Me being friendly isn't that odd, that's just how I am. Zack. Zack is the one that's being odd. Why, anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I'd give them. 
He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. He should be used to working different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind. But he's a big boy, he should be able to handle me. Uh... Isn't Hannah kind of being a hypocrite and... Like... Flirting? I guess Luke's not around, but still, this is, I guess, a little weird for a married woman. Uh, all it was, all it is, is a friendly touch there, a pretty smile here, and a gentle swearing of the hips as I move. Yeah, that's... I... Uh, yeah, that would probably make me uncomfortable. Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with what we're doing, right? Th actually, there is! Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the view. That's not what you're doing, lady! At least that's how I see it. That's not what I'm, you're doing! I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Oh, is he still seeing the ghost behind her and shit? Oh, that would explain why he's getting flustered, as she puts it. Could you maybe stop doing that? For that. Stop? I'm not sure if I want to, though. Alright, Zach, where are we? We are... Ordeal? Competent? I like it. I'll yes. stop if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. There we go. Sorry. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but... He gestures to the ring on my finger and let the fact of the matter ha hang heavily between us. Being told implicitly that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. It was just going to be some harmless flirting, right? So you've never had a girlfriend? No, no boyfriend either. You know, just in case you were gonna ask for that one, Des. <laughs> and you haven't even had your first kiss? Not a one, ma'am. What? Do you want to have your first kiss today? Whoa, Hannah! I can't help it. I really, really can't. I'm going to be. A, I'm going to apologize lots out later. Surely by this catty smile on my face, it is obvious that I'm just pulling his leg. <laughs> The laugh I failed to contain certainly gives it away, if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lights up in embarrassment, stammering and sputtering objections. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. <laughs> Zach. I never said I would kiss you, silly. Oh, Johans. What? No, what? No, no. D don't call your butler. She's Hannah. That would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. What? Your horns! Best man! That's hot. I do not think he can hear us from here either. That makes him even hotter. Oh, we're getting all flustered. Hannah's words. Not mine. Alright. Having dirty thoughts now. Never mind. Sorry. I'm good. <laughs> but it is hard to think you're not taken, Zachary. Why, whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs, wonderful meals, and wonderful memories. I could play guitar too. What? Fucking guy's perfect! You can? Oh my. Wonderful serenades as well then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine, strapping young gentleman like yourself. Let's not get carried away. Besides, I gotta be going. It's getting late and I got someplace else to be. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope. For a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Just, you know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. <laughs> <coughs> wow! The timing was so perfect! As fate would have it, the very moment the words leave his mouth, Johans comes out of the house. Judging by the slight raise of his brows, his whole... He has heard only the tail end of that sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. But you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? Hansi! To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely placing him within the threshold of the foyer and under the roof of the house. And just as ever, he is quick to return with a sardonic reply. I am now. 
As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Oh, what? No, I was just leaving, actually. So, you have a good night, Hana, and you too, Hansi. It was nice to meet you, Zach, honey. You have a safe trip. <laughs> Yo, Hans looks like, what the fuck? Just, what did I just come in for? What, what happened? He nods and the grin on his face as we say our goodbyes is the sweetest that I have ever seen. I linger looking out for him with his relatively tiny bicycle backpack safely secured in the basket in the front and a suitcase hooked to the back. I watch as he went down the path back to Anselm village until he is nothing more than a blip in the horizon. I cannot help help I cannot help the small smile on my face that go inside for supper. Entering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment I thought the electric work is not up to par, but that clearly is not the case as every other room is bright with artificial light. Finding the light switch is a monumental task considering the size and my unfamiliarity with the room. To make matters worse, dark grants the room a different atmosphere, eerie and frightening. It takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle. There is a distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me and only spurs me on my search. And when I do open the lights, there's a hiss. I'll turn the lights down, woman! What is he drinking? There at the end of the hall he is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and the glass in the other. What the fuck is he drinking? Perhaps I can let it go if it's only one glass. It's wine? However, I feel myself go livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? Oh. You know what the doctor said. Absinthe, Luke. Are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car. Honeybee, buttercup. Not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch. Not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. <sighs> Let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? Huh? If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. You didn't do anything! You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. You just bossed people around. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? Uh... Was it gonna be, should I tell the truth or tell a little- No, we're gonna tell the truth. I was talking with Zachary, the photographer for Luxury Living. Uh, I can't tell if it went down or not. I have no reason to tell the lies, it's not like I'm guilty of anything. But as Luke's expression turns, he makes me feel like I actually am to blame for something. He has a way of making me laid bare with that- with just a look. That really had struck me when we first met years ago. That giant negro. Whoa! Stop! You were having a secret meeting behind my back and it was with him? I have like... I don't like that word at all. At all. I don't care who says it. What are you implying? I'm implying nothing. I'm just worried. You know better than to trust those media types, Buttercup. He must have been really friendly to occupy your time like that. And I have like just sad feeling after every time I hear that word. Uh but all he's looking for is his next big headline. He's a photographer for an interior design magazine. Doesn't matter. You let one little thing slip, one wrong move, and it'll blow up in the telly in the morning. He'll go to his journalist friends to gossip and make a quick quid. His eyes were the first thing I noticed about him. They were like nature, the grass and the trees, wonderful and breathtaking. 
Now as I look at him, they're nothing but the same shade of green as the bloody damn drink in his hand. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Excuse me again? We're talking about you, Hana. No, I am pretty sure we were talking about you and your drinking problem, Luke, right? Hangover forgotten during the course of this little spat, the man jumps to his feet and seethes. It looks like he's barely stopping himself from throwing the nearest thing he can find. Oh, it is not a problem. I can stop whenever I want. Yeah, everyone says that. And even if it was, I think you can very well stay out of it, as it only affects my own kidneys or liver or whatever the bloody hell that shite pollutes. Whatever aftermath that occurs because of your little chit-chat with the Negro no. affects the both of us, however. Nope. Look, Don't Luke. Like it. Nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Well, now I think I'm getting jealous. Or I would be if it weren't for this damn headache. <laughs> Maybe you should drink more. Maybe. Supper is spent in silence with nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served. Well, grander than usual anyway. Most likely due to Luke's complaints of stress. Ooh. A platter of native oysters for starters and tranche of turbo. Uh, with purple sprouting broccoli, lemon, capers, and anchovy sauce for mains. To finish it all off, black tea and golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. But when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, then leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Lonely in the f lull of the night, I sit in a house too big and too empty for an un unwelcoming. Even with its warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. There is no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I have faced before. This is a minor setback. What I hope will be a long and happy life. To remind myself that this place is for Luke and for our future children fills me with renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is already having a fucking goddamn it. The wailing is far away and muffled, yet at the same time it shakes me to my very core as I hear it. As if the stuttering is just standing right beside me. Hearing it sends a chill down my spine and it makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. Understandable, but who is that? <laughs> Fuck. Come on. Why you gotta... Why is everyone so fucking curious? Curiosity sinks as I, as I follow the sound. Oh, fire. I don't like this. Into the wine cellar hatch. Hello? Anybody down there? I am curious and concerned, but there's no way I'm going down in the dark and humid underground. I'm not as enthusiastic as Luke, who considers himself quite the connoisseur. However, I also cannot bring myself to go to bed with this racket going on. It is one of the household help. Uh, they will surely need some talking. After all, this wouldn't be the first time I've gone and find one of the maids sobbing their eyes out over one thing or another. As professional as our staff are, they are still human. More often than not, it was either Johans or I who would calm them down, who would help them figure out how to go on about things. Unfortunately, I am not in high spirits right now, so I am not as wholly benevolent. So I will call them out. I knock three times, waiting for any sort of reply it yields me with no results, and I've already touched the floor hatch far too many times than what I'd like. I take a deep breath before reaching out to whoever is inside. I've learned from experience that people respond better to kindness than threats. Shouting angrily would not help him in coaxing them you, out. You, in the cellar, do come out. We don't want Luke waking up and finding you in there, do we? That man would go ballistic thinking someone was trying to steal his precious wine. Still nothing. You can have a good cry. Just not in there, yes? Why don't you come out here and we can have a cuppa and you can tell me all about whatever it is you're bawling about. With how long I'm standing here, however, I'm starting to think myself as a fool. I did not want to acknowledge the other feeling I have, especially as the wailing took on an eerie turn. The thought of being played with didn't sit too well with me, and I had to stop myself from getting too hot-headed as I try one more time. Now you come out of there! That is an order from the lady of the house, do you hear me? Why I ought to? I freeze as a hand clamps down on my shoulder. Ah, oh, god damn it. It's gonna be a sudden jump scare. The dread I've been feeling all this time makes itself known as I kneel unmoving, not even daring to breathe. 
I can feel my heart pounding against my chest. The touch is gone as quickly as it seized me. Oh! Shit! Johans! To the rescue! It is only Johans I see when I look back. Apologies, madam, for touching you like that. You were not responding to my voice, and you looked about ready to wake the whole mansion up. I was... Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting rather loud, wasn't I? But that crying woman in there, we must do something about her. Crying woman? Question mark? He grows silent for a moment and looks concerned. At least, I'd like to interpret it as concern, given how stoic our head butler usually is. Or rather, it must have been concern as he takes off a glove and presses the back of his hand on my forehead before his worrisome inquiry. I beg your pardon, what crying woman? Are you feeling well, madam? In the cellar? Can't you hear her? Madam, Hannah, no one is down there. What? The cellar is locked. Only Luke and I have duplicates of the keys. Nobody is down there. I stare at Adam in disbelief, but when I listen once more, I hear no crying. Tugging at the hatch for no good measure to prove his words to be true, too. The thing won't budge unless I had a key, short of using power tools on it. Perhaps it is time for you to go to bed, madam. You are simply tired and hearing things, a perfectly normal human experience. But if you are still experiencing auditory hallucinations in the morning, you are free to consult with me. There is a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach as he helps me up to my feet. What he says makes sense, and who am I to question someone who used to be a doctor? I am just tired, that's it. Long day of moving, the interview, dealing with Luke. That has all drained me of any proper sense. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. I just need some sleep, that's all. Of course I'm right. Go on then. Gute Nacht. Good night, Johans. Good night, house. It's just fatigue. That's what I keep telling myself, although I can't ignore the strange feeling in my gut. Either there is something wrong with the house, or is there something wrong with my head? Sleep will be elusive tonight. Luke is already gone by the time I rise. There isn't, there isn't a single hide nor hair of him to be found, and trying to call him on his mobile is as bust, as it only goes straight to his voicemail. That's twice in a row he's gone on me. And for him to disappear today of all days, it is every bit upsetting because of what's to come. The morning is once again filled with a whirlwind of activity. Fortunately, I am much more refreshed as we, well, I took a break from my responsibilities. I haven't the faintest clue where Luke was yesterday. Today is going to be a busy day, although unlike Wednesday, the master of the house isn't here right now. Absent once again from his duties. What the fuck does Luke do? I never actually asked. Asked? Because... All I figured was that he just inherited a ton of money from... His... Wife, right? Here he works, right? I don't know what the Wright's family do- What do they do? Are they real estate? No, that can't be right. If they were real estate, they'd just do- No, wait, do, would they need- I'm so confused. Maybe it'll be explained at the last- Last character, five characters later. Hopefully you'll be back in time for the party. This is our house, after all. A grand housewarming party for the wonderful Wright Mansion. Every person of importance from Luxborn is invited. There will be a few guests flying in as well. Of course, there will be some people from the media, along with peop uh, friends, friends and acquaintances, who are made less, no less important regardless of their status in society. Marianne and I discuss business and last-minute touches to the house before finalizing everything. Not there is much change from our original plans. Bar any huge additions to the property itself, the mansion is nearly 100% complete. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the Wright Mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Luke and I had a small tiff about making the second bedroom into a child's playroom, which I insisted is completely practical. In the end, he had to be acquiesced. I didn't give him a choice in the matter. 
I even brought this wonderful wooden crib from the antique store yesterday, including some toys. Just in case anyone brings their baby, of course. Besides, we have little need for actual guest rooms. We hardly have guests to spend the night. If we absolutely if we absolutely have to, we often choose to foot the bill for their visit on one of our hotels instead, always as Luke's own assistance. And on the off chance that we actually let someone stay, the bedroom in the opposite wing is still up to the task. Oh no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. No, I did not agree to have him. What? A helipad? All right then. Well, do we have any other concerns? Anything we need to put on our agenda before the party commences? No, I don't think so. Not unless Luke has anything else to say. Is he around then? It'd be best if we can note down his request right away considering the scope of his usual ones. Uh, around? No. Where is he? Who knows where? I don't. No, he's not around. It, she didn't have to point out the obvious now, did she? After seven long years, I'd already got used to him. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. Had a phone call. After seven long years, I'd already gotten used to him. I should be by now. Still not, apparently. But don't you have a party? I want nothing more than to complain to Winge about how unfair this is. However, airing out one's dirty laundry is simply taboo among I society. To do so will make you a right target for the next dinner party chit chat. Vultures, a lot of them, really. Or most of them, at least. There are always good ones like Rochelle Lee. But put your trust in the wrong person and you'll find yourself eagerly picked apart. Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. Oh. Perhaps I'm being a bit too rash, a bit too hot-headed in divulging details, but I thought myself clever with the plan to dress it up as gossip. Marianne's raised eyebrow makes me unsure whether she is interested or not. Although that does make things better if she has no interest and therefore has no hidden intent to utilize whatever I might say to her. They've been married for a long time and they've hit a... how do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. Wait, isn't she, isn't Rochelle pregnant? But it's never enough for her. Oh boy. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest or...? Yeah. Honest. Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need someone to sugarcoat it. I'm not some fragile thing that I'm just going to break down at the slightest thing. She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee while I stare into my own cup of coffee. Tea. Cup of tea. Cuppa. Right? The silence stretches on and I'm almost believe and I almost believe that she will never answer my question. I suppose that I shouldn't blame her, putting her in a tight spot like this. I don't think it actually went down, I think it went up. The bar. Her hesitation is understandable, though I loathe to admit it. She simply wants this whole thing to stay professional. Then she speaks. If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? It's my turn to hesitate now. I really didn't expect such a straightforward question. And to get it to the heart of the matter? I suppose I'm not as clever as I'd like to think. Or is it really that bad of an outsider to see our little marital troubles? Surely we aren't that obvious, are we? We've put up the act of a perfect couple for years, although it hadn't always been an act. Marianne is just more keen on the average person, of course. It is a, necess uh, it is a necessity to her career, and she's been working so closely with us. Yes, that's it. Suppose it is. 
What would you tell me? Then, I tell you it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But, if the troubled husband with a neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Someone who won't even give him the time of the day. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. That's just my two pence worth, of course. So you're saying we... they should divorce? Nothing as drastic as that. If they're afraid that it might lead to just that, then maybe that is what's meant to happen in the first place. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. But it's just a short hiatus, is all. Or, you know, couples therapy? Look, I'm really not the best person to ask about relationships. So grain of salt and all that. She trails off, having said her piece, and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There's a calm dis there's a calm despite the nature of what she had just been discussed. To say that her words make me start to think it is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. And to say that this might be the calm before the storm is a possibility. Others have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My own parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years. Seven years isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what and where our relationship can bring us. And at the same time, seven years. Well, it hasn't been entirely made up of unhappy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that it might last for a very long time. I dread the thought that these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into an all-out resentment. The, the idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares me. I can't even pinpoint the exact moment of our blissful union turned sour. When did he start to seek other women, lacking any ulterior motives? When did we start to co cooperate only to suit our materialistic greed and attention-seeking ways? Money and success. Fame and glamour. Are those the only reasons we still stay together? <clears throat> There's a short cough before Marianne cleared her throat. I must have been quiet for so long and I move to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet, unsure on how to proceed. Uh, some sort of odd... Awkward shuffle occurs as we decide whether to sit back or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy! You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if Foy can be excused? Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Hmm. We are now at October 28th. Don't know where that puts me. What? Wait, when did the, the thing with Isabel happen? Hold on. Uh... Branching tree? Oh, okay, never mind. Um... How do I... Was... Where's the... Ah, the 24th is when it happens. I guess it comes back later? Hopefully she's alive. Hopefully. Today is the 28th. Hannah and Marianne were seen discussing the mansion's finishing touches before the housewarming party. On a whim, Hannah asked for Marianne's opinion about a certain couple having marital problems. It leaves the former with something to think about after the latter excused herself from attending the party. Alright. The scene outside the parlor is a great organized mess. <laughs> Aside from our own household help, we hired the service of the Temp Agency, which provides staff for Wright Enterprise in the hospitality sector. Even our very skilled staff can undertake a party of this site on their own. Waiters, busboys, busboys, hostesses, and other staff captains move about in droves carrying crockery 
and serveware good for several dozen people and then some. Chefs and bartenders tail after Johans, looking for like scared little children, as he escorts them through the kitchen and into the wine cellar. Peru used the stock to select what can be served at the party and what can be used to, for cooking. Schnell! We have a lot to do and I believe we did not hire snails. Snails are for the dishes. A string quartet readies up to play for the evening, tuning their instruments as they fill the air with idle chatter. Floral decor worth thousands, fill faces, wreaths, and baskets, while petals are scattered along the driveway front. Ooh, it's a cake! An ice sculpture of a reindeer is brought in carefully by a pa Oh, it's a- what? It's not a cake? It is followed by a simple cake. Oh! Oh, oh, I see. The deer behind it is the ice sculpture. Got it. Just a five-tier white chiffon one with white chocolate and mousse, fresh berries, and a light dusting of edible gold leaf. That's like a thousand dollars, probably? Uh, but despite the fact that I told Mary Ann how I will attend to all of this, I find myself unable to focus or care for any of it. I still have our discussion running in my mind, and looking at all of this, I only see Luke everywhere. These are all the grand things that Luke wanted to have for the party. I wanted I had wanted a small, elegant, and simple gathering with only a select few invited, namely the people who I uh, namely the people who I would actually trust to enter my home. I did not want bloody politicians or paparazzi in here, no matter how used I am to catering them. At least be here for your party. Damn it, Luke. The entire thing screamed Luke, right? I can't help but add another question to my growing list of queries. When did I lose myself? It's always about him nowadays, it isn't, isn't it? What about Hannah Wright? What about Hannah Evans? I used to be my own woman, who made her own name, her own career, and her own decisions. Sure, I was already the social butterfly that I still am today, but it wasn't all empty, shallow gossip and sitting pretty. I was also lauded for my knowledge and talent. Finance manager wasn't just handed to me just because my father owned the company. I'd insisted that I start from the bottom so I could work my way to the top and prove myself. Damn! Alright, more respect to Hannah. And I did. I worked numbers, managed budgets, money and accounts, analyzing the competition and market trends. There was the calculation of financial risk, cost reduction opportunities, auditor liaison, and public relations supervision of staff and wow well i generally had a huge slew of responsibilities admittedly i was already quite the attention seeker even back then having dedicated most of my youth creating for my parents approval failing that i turned to others looking for praise from anyone who would give it however fleeting it, it, it all was and luke oh luke the way he looked at me the way he watched me and took a genuine interest he had me disgustingly obsessed since day one, hasn't he? He saw for me a Hannah Evans with both my faults and my achievements. The man didn't treat me like some damsel in distress or some prize to be won. And I remember the nights before we were married where we talked about everything and anything. From big things like business, society, and philosophy to little things such as what we had, to, we had for breakfast or whether we liked cats or dogs more. We both preferred dogs. Nowadays, I'm just Luke Wright's wife. It's mostly my fault, isn't it? They told me that husbands preferred wives who are docile and subordinate. A woman who will always be there for him, yet would never outshine him in all aspects of sex except beauty. A wife needs to be at home and attend to his needs, have children, and to take care of, him, of them in his absence. Uh, they said I have no business working anymore after I was married. What? That sounds ridiculous. I can blame society, but I listened. Before I can fall further into this introspective pit of self-loathing, someone calls for my attention. The guests have arrived, madam. And Luke? Running a bit late, I'm afraid. <sighs> late for his own party. That man, I swear. He's probably looking to make a dramatic entrance knowing him. Open the doors then. We mustn't hurry. Cars line up the driveway, peppering the front of the mansion with vehicles of every kind. Grand tours, supercars, even the odd 
high-end muscle car to convertibles, grand saloons, and other luxury cars can be seen being parked by valets. A handful of cabs drive off, possibly for those who thought it too troublesome to bring their own cars. There are at least two different media vans as well. They're all here for what may be considered the biggest event of the year for Luxborn so far. Who knows what we'll plan for the winter late holidays. Welcome, welcome everyone. Please make yourselves at home. Some of the guests idle, enjoying the warm, if not strange sunshine we are experiencing before gloomy skies inevitably return. They, re they greet acquaintances and friends with warm smiles, others less so. From where I stand, I can see the hierarchy of power, the ties that bind these individuals here, whether through convenience or necessity. However, there are a few who are not here to further cement their current place in the higher society. Ashton? What the fuck? Such as that young man with his ori oriental air. God damn it. Ignoring of the looks he receives from women and men alike. Be careful with Shirley, all right? Man from the Orient. Really? Hannah? Or that rose-haired woman talking on their phone while she looks unsure of why she is here exactly. Does no one... Is pink hair like a normal thing? Yes, yes, I'm at the party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. Maybe it's just, like, dark red hair. But lightly colored for the anime aesthetic. I see Zachary, the photographer, as well. He talks to a few of the other media crew with an air of familiarity. I was just here a few days ago, yeah. yeah and the inside is huge, but the staff are pretty helpful if you get lost. <laughs> and then there are people like the chief inspector. People who I could never be too sure about because he's half chief inspector, half exorcist Father Norman. Uh, people who stand on the border between being suspicious and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle, Lee. Damn. The doctors again. Damn. What? Uh, she told me she'll just be in the gardens. Bet she's lying and that she's somewhere around mingling, gossiping with the other ladies. Oh shit, what if that's where Luke is? Oh my god. I just had a really bad thought. What if... <laughs> What if Rochelle Lee's child isn't the chief inspector's and said it's Luke's? I could so sort of see that. I don't trust Luke. I don't trust this guy. And I don't trust Rochelle because I haven't seen her yet. It's no offense, but that seems to be all you ladies do at these parties. And aren't you gossiping right now? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing persons report now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? He's around. <laughs> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. Don't tell me, let me guess. He's finally drunken himself to death and not wanting a scandal. You've hidden his body. I was wanting to give this housewarming gift to him personally, too. It's a plate that holds a wine glass so he can stop killing himself with liquid lunches. Looks like it's too late for that. Nothing like that. Besides, this is a hardly polite conversation. Oh, relax. I'm just trying to be cheeky to lighten the mood. It's not like I want Luke dead. Uh-huh. The man doesn't serve dodgy plonk like the others when I visit, and he pays his respects well enough. I could use a glass of wine or three, actually. Three? Rochelle's been in a horrid mood. Threw a stilettos at me the other day and almost took an eye out. Not sure if this is how it usually goes, but I blame the pregnancy. I wouldn't know, would I? Still no plans for a baby. Well, I guess that's for the best. If it's this bad now, I can't even imagine how bad it'll be when that little baby bump becomes huge. Have I mentioned how I don't trust him no matter how hard I try to do so? At least he br brought a gift, I suppose. Why don't you just go inside and have some wine, Lee? Think I will, thanks. Greetings such as these carry on as the guests continue to trickle in. Whether we have short conversations or merely shake hands and nod heads, I make sure to attend and welcome each of them. As the first hour passes by, the rest of the stragglers and I adjourn to the ballroom. Any latecomers will have the attention of the porter instead. I have other duties to attend to now. Okay. 
Is that Luke on the far left? No, right? All right, well anyways, hosting parties is always the same old song and dance no matter how big or small it is. You make yourself, uh, you make sure your guests are well fed, have good company, and have them generally enjoy themselves. So when my opening remarks are done and when the band has started to play and the guests are have started eating, I find myself wandering around aimlessly unless I am pulled aside. For a while, I stay with a small group and entertain them before excusing myself. And when they're not anymore watching me, I end up watching them. When they don't listen, I do. Local banker is having trouble with his daughter. He wishes to marry her off, but she wants nothing more to make music. One of our hotel managers worry about the stolen belongings of one of his patrons, failing in security, which should be brought up to higher authority soon. By our mayor? Well, his cat died. And then there's the rose-haired woman once again. It's not hard to note. It's hard not to notice her with her distinctive locks. She also lacks the grace that the other ladies have, though that does not make her any less beautiful. Her stance and the air she exudes instead are strong. They make her stand out despite her casual attire. Many men have already given her their attention, though each invitation to dance has been turned down. I approached, intrigued, although it is no great mystery what occupies her own attention, with the glances she keeps sending towards the boy with the oriental hair. Why is it called orient? Uh, she remains unaware though, even as I stand beside her, pretending that I am there for a drink. You didn't realize oh. the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. What'd she say? You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Oh, that's kind of nice. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the... Parvenu, those who climb, that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? The boy comes over, but I do not... But I do nothing to speak any softer. He merely passes by, and it is a wonder he doesn't hear what I say. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down those offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash. That's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. Oh, she's a little pissed. In all my life, I've never seen a face grow red so fast. The shade of her hair didn't help as well. This is the most pink I've seen on a person lately. Really? You mean the hair or the face? What? No, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Many here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. Uh-huh. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. Probably half and half. It's more the latter currently. Oh, so it is kind of the former. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. I waver as I feel the burning of someone's stares. It's chilling and... Though I'm used to enduring the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. Okay, well... Thanks, ghost lady! It is chilling and... Though I'm used to enduring the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. My attention is pulled from the girl and I see this woman staring. Dark haired and dirty, she looks more like a beggar than a guest. And I have half the mind to call the security at her when her mouth breaks into a grin. <laughs> All I hear is her laughing, taunting. Her stare makes my blood run cold. She looks at me like I'm nothing but a pig to slaughter for her amusement. It makes my hand shake and I nearly drop my drink. And, I, and in a blink, she's gone and the buzz of the party returns. I'll keep that in mind, but are you alright? Yes, uh, sorry. I just thought I saw something strange. Anyway, on a right, as you must already know. 
Rebecca Gales. Gales, Gales, Gales. The name is familiar. Reunion? Like a fond memory. I recall a kind lady, a private tutor, who treated me like her own daughter when I was young. She didn't even bring me food, and there was no need to do so. Usually sto stovies. Stovies? Stovies. Stovies is a Scottish dish based on potatoes and meat. Recipes and ingredients vary widely, but the dish always contains potatoes, onions, and other vegetables. Sausages, roast beef, minced beef, or other meat. Stovies is thus a dish intended for use, intended to use leftover food. There's a lot of leftover food recipes in England, isn't there? All right. Oh, the professor and your little Becky. <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And mom says hi, by the way. But yeah, that's me, little Becky. We met once before. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lab called something with an A. Wow. Childhood friends with Ash, I guess. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander. Andrew? The more I list off names, the more red and the more quiet Becky gets. She starts to look a bit miserable as her body language shows discomfort and stiffness. Perhaps I've triggered a hard childhood memory. She really hadn't been mean when she visited with her mother. I don't quite remember all of it. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one. Oh goodness me, after all these years! I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. And a tad bit sad. <laughs> uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss. Please, Honor's fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Uh, the idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? Oh, plus one for Becky on respect. You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. Plus two. <laughs> but what do I know? There is a grimace, although she starts to relax around my presence. How long has it been since we met as children? Very a long time. She was tiny back then, if I recall quite correctly. I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. But have you told him how you feel? And it's been what? 20 years? Damn! 17, actually. Still! But no, not yet. He can be a bit... dense. I was hoping that maybe he'd notice on his own and... Well, that won't do. What if you two become husband and wife? He's not to be dense when he's sworn himself to another person. Why, you might just as well consider leaving before the day's even begun. If that happens, I'll have to give him a good ear bashing, won't I? Whoever anyone ends up with, it's not going to be a perfect relationship anyway. There's going to be things you'll love and things you'll hate about the other person. We're just humans. It's funny. Here I am, trying to give you advice when you did the very same thing back then. I remember you giving me a makeover when we were still kids. And you were the first I told anyone about my... <laughs> crush. I do remember now that she mentions it. Did I give her that yellow summer dress or the pink blouse and med petticoat? You must have kept some of what I said in mind. It feels ridiculous remembering all of the years later, talking about boys and how they go crazy for pretty girls. As if it's some gospel every woman should be adhered to. It was so easy to say such things then, with me not knowing any better. 
Though looking at her now, she must have kept some of what I said in mind. Perhaps I did say something good at the time? Enough for her to take it to heart? But all that didn't matter in the moment as I mull over what she just said in my head. What Becky told me is very different from what Marianne told me. There is no time to ponder over that, however, as a hush descends upon the once lively crowd. The, mus the music of strings and the chatter... This is not a jump scare, god damn it. Slows to a grinding halt as the horse... Horse? Jesus. As the doors in the foyer opens, the last of the latecomer should have arrived minutes ago. And anyone else this late would simply... Oh god, it's... It's Luke. So this can only be one person, or rather one man. There's only one man who is audacious enough to revive his own party so late. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. Still drinking. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. That better be fruit punch, Luke. Unlike I, who was raised in the spotlight and simply grew used to its presence, he sought it out every chance he could, even when there were no spotlight that shone. And I'll never put it against him when he smiles like that. He did so quite brilliantly under the scrutiny when he challenges his own showmanship. You can tell by the way people's uh, eyes light up as he speaks. How they listen, enraptured, even if all he's doing is a simple greeting. A little wave of his hand here, a little smile there, and a bit of swagger. I always tell him that if, that if he is not to be a businessman, he'll do well as an entertainer. I love the sight of him, especially when he looks at me, and he beckons me over to humbly share his place. Not a single second is wasted as I excuse myself from Becky's side and make my way to my loops. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> so enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. There's a round of applause, cheers, and even some hoots. Hoots? Guests approach us left and right to shake Lute's hand and greet him personally. Praises on their lips. It is because of this that I do not see her. I do not see her until she is dangerously close with fury in her eyes and she's already spitting vi Who is this? Um... Johans restrains her, taking care not to unnecessarily harm the preg- Is it Rochelle? But that does not- That does little to deter her rage, and the man has no choice but to let her go, lest an unborn child is hurt. Although it might be too late for that, as I see an emptied glass of wine in her- Rochelle, don't drink! How much has she imbibed in? Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and... No! Shut it, you monster! What? I ain't talking to you! What? I'm talking to this scumbag over here! You bloody bastard standing there with your smarmy smile! She interrupts me, jabbing her finger in my direction before she rounds on Luke. Even as whispers and murmurs break out among the guests, I, all I can focus is the heat of the moment. Obviously intoxicated, judging by the smell of alcohol in her breath. I'm not ticked off about this little display of hers, at least not yet. But I'm absolutely pissed by the fact that she's endangered her own baby by drinking. There is a considerable amount of restraint and grace that I must exercise while I wait for her tantrum to subside. I keep a patient, if tight, smile on my face. Luke's expression, on the other hand, is indecipherable. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle! Where's your husband? Who even invited you? I did. And I told you with great emphasis not to. Now we have a drunk, hormonal, pregnant woman causing a stir. What is even going on? I am just about to ask that exact same thing. I don't know, but Rochelle, do calm down before you hurt yourself. I can't understand a word you're saying. Where is that husband of yours? Where is the inspector? Lee! Collect your wife right now! Collect your wife? Okay. Don't you fucking talk like I'm not here and you're not responsible, you ass! Oh my god, better call it. You told me that I should wait for you in the gardens! Excuse me? What is this nonsense you're going on about? Crazy talk! That's all it is! Just completely and utterly mad! Has anyone seen the Chief Inspector? I am pregnant oh. with your little bastard. Oh. You promised me you'll take responsibility. 
Well, this is not the way I thought I would, like, figure it out. God damn it, Luke! I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me! What? What? What do you mean you're pregnant with? Luke, is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband! I told you to leave that damn wife of yours! Look at her! Does she look like she wants a baby? Does she look like she could take care of a baby? Oh boy. It is now that Johans returns with security along with a concerned looking Officer Lee. They surround her and move to escort the hysterical woman. Judging by his pale face, he has heard the whole thing, and I feel nothing but pity for the man. I'm so sorry for her behavior. She's been under a lot of stress. And the alcohol. Talking nonsense, that's all it is. You're not allowed to drink because of the baby, Shelly. What are you thinking? Nothing to see here, people. Move along. Is there really nothing here but the ramblings of a drunk? Yes, that's right. There's no way that what... Really? Hannah! There's no way that what Rochelle says is the truth. What she says doesn't match up. I know... Do you know, Luke? If such a scandalous meeting were to be arranged, he won't do it in such an exposed place, especially not near his precious flowers. And he definitely won't promise a responsibility over a child unless it can be helped. Besides, Luke will never... will never go as far as to sleep with them. Yes, he would. Yes, he would. Okay, fine. Who am I kidding? If I am completely honest with myself, he might cheat. With a bit of tem tem temptation and a bit of alcohol, he just might. And doesn't that just make my blood boil to even think of the slightest possibility of infidelity? Lee isn't too far off when he told me how Luke still acted like some young hotshot bachelor. Oh. Uh. I'm not sure what I want here. Man. I... I don't know. I want to believe that Luke is a piece of shit and Rochelle is telling the truth. Like something in my gut is telling me like maybe it's not true and it's really all slander and he's just really I don't know it just feels wrong that he's flirting with other women oh uh, we'll just take a break I need to work for my happy ending I don't know what that means I don't know what any of these mean actually I don't know what any of these will do I don't think... I don't know. I don't know. This is like the one choice I don't know. I guess we'll just take a break. I think it went down, actually. Fuck. Maybe Arianne, Marianne had a point. If I am frustrated, and if I am unhappy, maybe a break is needed. Some time apart might just be what the art doctor ordered. Time apart to clear our heads and think for ourselves. For myself to be exact. Because looking at this mess before me just brings me nothing but distress. I feel a bit nauseous actually, now that I think about it. Luke's too busy making a scene to notice, and a concerned Becky pulls me to the side. He looks as disturbed as I am from the sudden turn of events. Probably not a big fan of drama. Definitely not used to it at any rate. Not surprising as her parents were lovely, yet simple people. Uh, hey! I figured you could use the save. You looked like you weren't doing too hot back there. Do we need to call a doctor or something? Oh no, I'm... I'll just be needing some fresh air, that's all. Some help getting out of here would be much appreciated. Sure, that won't be a problem. I wanted to get away from this drama too anyway. Just 
Hey, Zachary! Hey, Zach! At the mention of his name, I can't help but seek him out in the crowd as he makes his way over. They know each other? Becca! This is a real me- uh, Oh, hey, Miss Wright. Uh... Was he- What was he about to say? If I am to assign a random number to dictate the odds of having two of my acquaintances know each other, I'll say the odds are one out of a thousand. And if this is any other situation, I would have been suspicious. It isn't completely impossible to have two random strangers who I've met on separate occasions to know each other in what will be complete random happenstance. It's just that it's been faked before to try and dupe me because of who I am and who I'm married to. But right now, coincidence or not, I'm just grateful for the help. As long as this doesn't turn out to be a kidnapping anyway. Hello, Zachary. I told you to call me Hana. Did I not? Yeah, you did. So this is what you called me for. We gonna get Hana out of here? I can see they're friends. Not terribly close ones, but friends not nonetheless. <laughs> That'd be great. They make quick work of getting us through the crowd. The people part because of Zachary's broad build, even if they want to approach me. And that isn't enough. Becky's pointed glares keep them at bay. We even make it out of the ballroom without any untoward incident. Though judging by the commotion in the other room, the same cannot be said about the unexpected eviction. I really do need the fresh air. I need to be away from those nosy Parkers. I need to be away from Luke. This is a good start as any. Hey, I gotta go back in there. Completely forgot my bag like an airhead. And I'll see if I can tag Ash on the way out. You'll be fine here, right, Hannah? Not to worry, dearie. I'll just be right here. Zack will be with you if you need anything. Becky balks at the idea of going back into the ballroom. Anyone who hasn't yet would have realized I'm gone by now. And those busybodies will be gossiping about how I left the building with two unknowns. Along with what just transpired, stories both inaccurate and made up will be spread by the night's end. It all matters very little in the grand scheme of things, however, of course. I won't even bother try I won't even bother to try and quell them by returning to the fray. That leaves me with... Zachary? Yeah, you need something? I was only going to say how nice it is to see you again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can see the tension on the line of his shoulders. Odd how awkward he is when this isn't our first meeting. We had, our, we had met on professional terms, certainly, but I'd like to think it was friendly. Nonetheless, I do not push the issue about the parent discomfort when we were left alone. Not right away, at any rate. I know my curiosity will get the better of me soon. Before I can say anything, however, he speaks up. You okay there, Hana? I mean, of course you're not okay after what happened in there. I mean, th th that was terrible. But you're not gonna just fall down and faint or anything, right? I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. A beat. I should be asking you the same thing. I remember you being a lot more... eloquent. Oh yeah, I'm just not too good with staying too long in a crowded room. Or handling intense drama, you know. Sorry about my clothes, didn't think there'd be a dress code. Not that I have anything that nice to wear to a shindig like this. I dig nice, small, simple parties, so this is a real doozy for me. And do you host your own nice, small, and simple parties often? Only when there's occasion, birthdays, and stuff. Those are a lot more fun for me, and I can be a lot more selective about letting only the people I'm cool with attend, right? I get to pick the food, too. Of course, I make most of them myself. There's usually a dozen people or less, and all we really do is just hang out. Maybe do some grilling, karaoke, dancing, you know, the usual. That sounds nice. Yeah, you sure you're all right? You aren't exactly being eloquent yourself, as you put it. You must have something you want to get off your chest. I don't know, Zachary. What am I supposed to say? You can scream merde if you want. <laughs> I won't snitch. What? You want to know what I think? How I feel? Oh boy. I think my friend may have slept with my husband. At least, I'm pretty sure she isn't pregnant with his baby, which isn't much now, is it? My husband is a selfish, pretentious, bloody sack of shite, and... Ugh, you know what? I don't give a flying fuck anymore! My god! I think I have chosen poorly. Well, that ain't good. 
Not giving a crap won't make the problem go away. I'm going to ask him for a break, Zachary. A divorce or like a break break? I'm not going to pretend that there isn't a problem, but I just need to step back. Gotcha. Fair enough. As long as you don't just up and disappear on him, I suppose. Yes. Now can we please stop talking about him? Tell me more about your small, simple parties. Karaoke and dancing. How does that even go together? Simple, really. We hope Ash doesn't take the mic, <laughs> put on a bit of fun music, and just dance. <laughs> Not that I can. But there ain't nothing complex about it. You can't be that bad. I'm pretty good with the twist. Or that's what they tell me, at least. I don't know what that means. I think they're just being nice. I'm sure it just looks awkward. Oh, the dance twist. Uh... How should I respond to him saying I'm... Sure it looks awkward? Uh... Yeah, we're not flirting, we're just talking. At least you can cook. Allegedly. You still bring no proof. This party ain't exactly a potluck, is it? True, true. Perhaps you can invite me to one of your simple parties. I will bring the cake. Yeah, why not? But with a cake that big like at your housewarming party, we'll be eating frosting for weeks. Maybe make it a little simpler and it's a deal. Simple would be nice. Simple is nice. Saturday, October 29th. I wish the same could be said about what I'm about to do. Oh man, we're actually going to go through with this, aren't we? In the aftermath of Rochelle's accusation that devastated Hannah was seen exiting the ballroom with Rebecca Gales and Zachary Steele, Hannah was left in the care of the man when Rebecca had to go back to the party in search of Ashton. Now alone, the two had a talk and both were smiling by the end of it. Yay! That's good. That's good. Ah, I don't know how I feel about Luke. Like, I didn't expect... I actually didn't know what the outcome would be when I said I would take a break from it all. I th actually thought that was like, I don't know, we should probably get away from the party and maybe talk to Luke about it. I actually didn't think... He's like, I'm so fucking fed up and I don't trust my husband anymore. Uh, I wish the same can be said about what I'm about to do. Simple isn't the adjective I would use to describe the task at hand. Because really, others won't tell their husband that they want to separate and say that no, this is not a divorce. Not yet, at least. The possibility is still there. But still, how am I even to explain to Luke without him throwing a fit? Putting too deeply into my sausages, I open my mouth to excuse myself. That is until I spy Luke mashing and stirring his poached eggs with a fork like a petulant child. He has been silent all the while, his chin in his hand and elbow resting on the table. I worry that my absence after the debacle may have caused more harm than good. Luke, I... I think we need a bit of a break. You know, some time apart. At my words, he grows still and silent. I'm not quite sure whether I should be worried or not. I take it as my cue to keep talking. It's not permanent or anything like that. Just for a while. In a few days, perhaps. I was thinking I can move back into our penthouse in the meantime. But I, I won't be moving out right away. So that I can help settle everything here. And I haven't even thought of packing yet. And I'll want to ask Johans to assign some of our staff. Uh, unless you want the penthouse anyway. Then I'll stay here instead. Hmm? No, you take the penthouse. It'll be easier for you. Isn't it supposed to be it? It isn't supposed to be this easy, is it? Can he really react so aloof to it? Isn't this to your liking? I imagine that you'd like the space and independence. You'll have the bed and covers to yourself, and you can have whatever you want prepared for meals. You can even have all the wine you want, though I... I'd rather that you don't. This isn't about that, Hana. Well, it's partly that, but... The man stops playing with his food and choosing instead to push the plate aside. What's wrong, Luke? He slumps back into his chair and he just stops short of putting his feet up on his table. I suspect he's wanting some wine or absent by now, but any sort of alcohol is suspiciously absent in his hands. Aside from that disaster yesterday and you telling me you want a divorce, everything is peachy keen. Will you want me to start in the letters then? To start the divorce settlements and whatnot? 
Will you be seeking ways to throw me out onto the street without a penny to my name? No, Luke, this isn't a divorce. I just told you this is only temporary. Are you really having a sulk because of what she said yesterday? I am having a sulk because you believe her. Ah. That's what I was afraid of. You stormed out and now you're asking for us to split up? Yeah, temporarily, because... I don't know. You haven't been entirely... trustworthy in the two hours that I've been with you. Soon enough, you'll want to throw me out like I'm a piece of trash. Do you think I would be this calm if I believed her, Lucille Mitchell Wright? Because believe me, if I did, well, it wouldn't be pretty. Besides, I know how you feel about children. It makes a whole statement laughable. Sure, whatever you say. His mouth draws into a thin line, and I can't bring myself to comment on this half-hearted reply. To me, the silence that follows seems oppressive. It only emphasizes the wall that I built up by my obeisance and its hubris. And it looms between us, keeping us apart. When are you leaving? In a week? It won't take that long to pack. After all saints, perhaps? I'll go and inform the staff of this. He only nods. And I'll be lying if I said that didn't disappoint me. I expected more resistance. The man could be stubborn as a mule if he wants to be. Perhaps I can leave now just to spite him. But that isn't like me. Even if this does end in a divorce, a thing we both surely wish to avoid, we can still leave on amicable, per uh, amicable terms. There's no point in making a mountain out of a molehill. What are you still doing here? Just leave. You still have some packing to do, don't what you? What the fuck? Go ahead. I won't stop you. What the fuck? Go ahead. And do nothing. There isn't much to do, it seems, when the rice step up to the plate and try to take responsibility for something. Perhaps because everything is already being handled by someone hired specifically for that job. And with Johans overseeing the staff and Luke handling everything as else as a whole, that doesn't leave much for me. I can't even take the job of delegation because all, of, all it takes is a word to one of the senior staff and everything will be taken care of for me. Moving in here a few days ago may have very well been the chore that took the most effort from me. And that didn't take any real effort at all. Yes, Hana, go buy a mansion in the middle of nowhere. Good idea. Great plan. There are no dishes to set aside and busy myself with. Any mess left behind now is nearly non-existent. To sit on a counter while eating cake is supposed to be my next plan. Alas, there isn't even, even one to finish off, and I don't really know what brought me to the kitchens in the first place. It's not like I'm craving anything else, nor do I have any unfinished business left here. But there's this calling to this room. Oh, fuck. Speaking of calling, why not just do that? Might as well, since I have nothing else to do. At least, that will require some effort to my part. With how cut off from the rest of Luxborn the mansion is, and with how long it was abandoned before we moved in, having a landline is out of the question. The solution, supposed to be, are mobiles. Though it isn't much considering how spotty the signal is in the area. It'll take a bit of maneuvering to get even a single bar as it is. Takes a bit, as I said it would. I have to park my rear on one of the cold drawers, but that suits me just fine. Another matter that needs my attempt oh, effort is who to call. She who must not be named is certainly off the list. Ah, for sure. That doesn't leave me much in the category of close friends who attended the party along with the category of people who is awake at this early hour. But soon enough, I manage and the call goes through. Hello, Rebecca Gales here. Uh, who's this? Good morning, Becky. Uh, Hannah? Oh wait, how did you get my number? How did you get her number? You responded to your RSVP through the phone. It's all saved in here, of course. Oh. I thought I'd like to say hi and make plans and get together sometime. Also, I'd love to hear news about your mother and father and about you, my dear. Oh, I hope I didn't wake you up. Oh, you're good. It's sports day at school today, so I was just prepping for that. Figures that you'd be a teacher as well. I'm sure your students must absolutely adore you. <laughs> Don't know about that. Mathematics? History, actually. Anyway, it's real nice to know you've got my number. I was going to ask for yours because mom wanted to keep in touch. You could have asked, silly girl. 
I would have gladly given it to you. Couldn't, though, because, well, the thing that happened. But really, I'm sorry, though. I gotta run. School, schedule, stuff. Is there anything else you want to say? Don't want to use the mobile while driving. Oh, of course, of course. I shouldn't keep you. But I wanted to thank you for your company yesterday. Not a problem. I was hoping you could thank Zachary on my behalf as well. He was really kind and wonderful. Well, you can tell him that yourself if you want. I can give you his number. Oh, no, no, I don't want to be a bother. Intruding on his privacy. Pretty sure he'd be fine with it. If you two on a first name basis and all. So, his number, right, it's... Oh, god damn it. Lady, you're not helping this woman's relationship. Or her sanity at all. I guess that's the point. This call starts to go static, much to my frustration. A strange clicking noise drowns out most of her words too. I can barely understand what she's saying. And the line completely dies. I can feel a headache coming along. It's just building up. Starting with a light throbbing on one side of my fight. The static is gone and that helps a lot, but there's still this incessant horrible clicking. Again and again and again and again. Uh, which doesn't make sense. The mobile's turned off, isn't it? And if it isn't coming from the phone, then where? Uh, looking about, I can't help but my, let my eyes be drawn to the hatch leading into the wine cellar once more. That's when the clicking stops and I can hear that crying, that familiar crying from before. What happened the other day when I told nobody should have been down there? I tried to forget because of how unsettled it made me to do so. One can hardly do that while I'm looking at the very thing I'm trying to forget. Someone is crying there again. But if I leave it alone, it simply won't stop bothering me for the rest of the day. I might have lo forgotten to lock it while the party is going on. This again! If somebody is pulling my leg, I will not be happy! No! Why'd you fucking open it? How'd you fucking open it? True enough! All it takes is a little bit of a pull to open the hatch. And I look down the cellar. Oh my god. And sense of uneasiness washes over me. It isn't just the sudden onset of vertigo and nausea, but also the darkness. Suffocating. I don't want to look. Fuck! No, I don't like this. As I look down, it feels as though it's looking back at me. I worry that something will suddenly pull me into the deep. The cries drown beneath the shrieks that start echoing my head high and shrill like nails being dragged across the chalkboard. They're all screaming, shouting at me. I can feel their rage. Help me. If you wants to drown me, drag me down and crush me in the very depths of the darkness. And there's nothing left of me. The deep abyss waits for me, for my death. They're all calling for it. This is a nightmare. What the fuck? There's a rope around my neck and I can feel the rest of me being torn apart. They're still screaming. Why is it so foggy? I'm screaming, though it is not my voice that escapes my lips. It's claws through, climbing up and forcing its way up my throat like putrid bile. I choke and gag, yet I scream and shriek at all at the same time. And I'm me, but not me. What? Whoa! 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 See? Ah, ah, I'm not good at typing! M? Okay, UCM. What does that stand for? I don't know. I almost said CUM. I'm like, huh, huh. No, that's not how it went. It, it's. I'm pretty sure it went UCM. Hopefully. Okay, never mind. Yeah, cool. It pushes me down to my knees before I'm prone and vulnerable on my stomach. It makes me tumble, and I can feel my whole body seizing, writhing on the floor. Everything and nothing hurts. It feels like I'm on the verge of death. Now, if I'm not dying, I nearly wish I actually am. Hana! Hana, what is going on in here? Why are you? Thanks. <gasps> Being Luke, something snaps back, and I'm able to take a gasp of air on my own volition for the first time in what feel like centuries. I would have rejoiced and cried for his name if the pain still didn't rack my body. Oh. Oh. Instead, all I can do is stare listlessly as he comes to my side and lifts me up, cradling, cradling me in his arms. He tries to get me on. Uh, he tries to get me to my feet, perhaps to take me out of here. But all he's able to do is get me to sit, making sure I'm not thra crashing on the floor. I can still feel my muscle spasm, limbs jerking like a puppet on a string. 
Luke holds me tight and keeps me still so that I do not hurt myself anymore. Whatever it is that happened, it is my mind feeling frayed and battered. Eventually the pain dies down in a dull ache. My own tongue stops feeling like cotton. It is only now that I can feel the wetness on my cheeks, tears streaking down my face. <coughs> <coughs> Coughing racks my body now that I don't feel like choking. And it just feels all so horrible. But I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Please. What happened here? Who did this to you? I don't know. I am so sorry. Shh, it's alright. You're safe now, Hana. You're safe now. <laughs>